Brittany Moncrease, we've talked to her a couple of times uh, just in the last hour. She is at Fair Park and she is with a NOAA scientist that specializes in space weather. Are you kidding me? Seriously, time to geek out some more. <laughs> Brittany. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, listen, I didn't know anything about space weather until Bill Murtaugh came and explained to me what space weather is. Because, you know, typically we think about the weather down here in our atmosphere, but there's weather that's happening in space too. So, Bill, tell us a little bit more about space weather and why the eclipse is helpful in your research. Yeah, so Space Weather Prediction Center in Boulder, Colorado, we monitor the sun 24-7. So the weather is, there is weather in space. It's different than weather here down on the ground. I don't care about hurricanes and tornadoes, that kind of stuff. I'm worried about what happens on the sun. That's why I'm here today. Big eruptions occur in the sun. We see these sunspots develop, and a meteorologist is looking for a low pressure center in the sun. Mm -hmm. Space weather people, we're looking for these sunspots, and they're several times the size of the Earth. Wow. And what they represent is complex magnetic structures in the sun that can erupt. And when they erupt, they send out this big blast of radiation that can affect us here and it affects power grids, satellites, GPS, airlines, communications, all the technologies we rely on for everything we do today. So it's a little bit scary sounding. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. That's like I told Jerry, if we do our job right, we get the information to the right hands, they do the right things to keep all that technology working, and then nobody knows about it. Now, so. this is special because for you all, you are constantly kind of recreating your own eclipse every day when you do this research. But today, I mean, Mother Nature, she's doing it for you. That's that's part, mostly why I'm here. So, <laughs> yeah, so we, we create an eclipse in, in our forecast center. That we actually create it in space with an instrument. It's called a coronagraph, where we block out the sun to see what's happening in the corona. Because when these big eruptions occur, we have to figure out, first of all, did it occur? We look on the corona. Okay. Then we got to determine, is it coming towards Earth? Right. And if right. it is coming towards Earth, how fast is it moving? Because it moves anywhere from one to six million miles an hour. Ooh. But the sun is 93 million miles away, so it takes a day or two or three days to get here. But then when it gets here, it's a big plasma cloud of magnetized gas. It's like a big magnet. Yeah. Earth is a magnet. And the two magnets come together and we get some problems. It can induce currents that cause problems to the grid. It heats up the atmosphere. It causes problems to satellites. All sorts of things can happen. So we got to let everyone know that it's about to happen. But this coronagraph that we rely on, that's what's going to happen today. Nature's coronagraph. It's going to produce just four minutes <laughs> of, the, of, of, of nature, of, of, the coron of that coronagraph that we rely on. Now I'm going to be able to look at the sun just for four minutes and see it. In, in, its, in its glory, all its glory. So. Oh, that's going to be awesome. And, and uh, we can't wait. We honestly can't wait. We were looking, and, and every time the clouds get just a little bit through and we get a glimpse of the sun, and you can see uh, the moon that is going over it, to me, the best description I have is kind of looks like Pac-Man. It's slowly making its way across. And so uh, we're excited. So we're going we're gonna to keep geeking out, as Izzy said, and keep looking at, oh, and we got the, the sun is making its way. So we're going we're gonna to take a break and watch that for you. We're going to toss it back over to you guys at the Perot.